Hi, I'm Michael Odie. I'm a SolarWinds contributor and president and CTO of Tech Inc. And in this presentation, I'm going to talk about getting started with the SQL Server CLR. And CLR is um, short for Common Language Runtime, and it's essentially the integration of the .NET framework with the SQL Server Relational Database Engine. So in this presentation, I'll give you an overview of what the SQL Server is all about and some of the advantages that it brings. I'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the types of objects that it can create, and also I'll discuss some of the reasons some administrators aren't crazy about implementing the CLR. Next, we'll dive into some of the details of it, and we'll look at how you enable the SQL Server CLR. By default, it's turned off. And then we'll actually dig into the, the nitty-gritty steps of how you actually create one, and we'll have a look at some of the code that's required to create a SQL Server CLR stored procedure. So essentially, the CLR is the .NET framework integrated with the SQL Server Relational Database Engine. Uh, this was first introduced back with SQL Server 2005, so it's been around for a while. What it allows you to do, though, is to leverage the functionality and all of the different classes that are in the .NET framework from the SQL Server engine, from your stored procedures or user-defined functions. And that can give you a lot of capability that doesn't exist within T-SQL. Uh, the data access for the SQL Server CLR is not as strong as T-SQL, but its ability to do things like handle strings or do regex expressions and to do access external resources is much stronger than you'd get out of the native uh, T-SQL. So it can bring a lot of advantages uh, into your SQL Server implementation. Uh, you can implement SQL Server CLR objects with any of the .NET languages. And you can create stored procedures, user-defined functions, triggers, aggregates, and user-defined types with it. The SQL Server CLR is a very powerful implementation. Some administrators aren't crazy about it though because it does open up some potential security risks because they don't might not necessarily want to have CLR objects executed on their systems. However, there are some security precautions you can uh, implement as you create your SQL CLR objects and uh, I'll address those as we continue through the presentation. When you go to create a SQL Server CLR object. In this case, we're going to go through the steps to create a SQL CLR stored procedure. Basically, you need to first enable the SQL Server CLR. Then you're going to need to create a .NET DLL. Typically, you would use Visual Studio to do this. The Visual Studio 2015 Community Edition is completely free, and it has all the different templates that you would need to create a SQL CLR object. Uh, you can then deploy that DLL directly from Visual Studio, where it will create the object for you and take care of a lot of the work. But I'm going to show you the steps of how you can also do this manually, where you first create the DLL, then you create an assembly, and then you use that assembly to create a SQL CLR stored procedure. And finally, I'll show what it looks like to actually run that stored procedure. It's exactly the same as running a standard T-SQL stored procedure. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and enable the SQL CLR. And we can do that using the SP configure command that you see here. Uh, and the option CLR enabled and give it the value of 1, which will enable the CLR. And after we do this, you need to run the reconfigure command to make this active. So let's go ahead and execute that. And you can see that we've got the message uh, configuration option, SQL CLR enabled, change from 0 to 1. So now the CLR is enabled. Now let's go ahead and flip over to Visual Studio and we'll have a look at our uh, SQL CLR stored procedure. Here's our stored procedure in Visual Studio. We can see we've uh, got a project created here in Visual Studio Community Edition 2015. It has templates that enable you to create SQL CLR objects and we've used one of those templates. They automatically bring in the namespaces that you need and here we see we've got the System Data SQL Client, System Data SQL Types, and Microsoft SQL Server Server namespaces that are included for us automatically. The name of our class is Stored Procedures, and you'll want to note that for later when we go ahead to create our uh, SQL CLR stored procedure. And the name of the function here is My SQL CLR. So you can see that here's the assembly we're going to create, the, the class that we're going to use, and then the function within that class. So if we go ahead and build this, we will go ahead and create this and we'll build the solution and you can see that our build succeeded so now we've got a DLL created out there that we can use for our SQL Server CLR stored procedure now let's go ahead and flip back to um, SQL Server Management Studio 
Here, the first thing we're going to do is use the create assembly statement. And you can see here, this is at the top, create assembly. We're going to give it a name, MySQL CLR. We're going to tell it where to find the DLL. Next, we're going to go ahead and give it the permission set that we're going to use. In this case, it's, uh, it's going to be safe. That means this uh, SQL CLR stored procedure will not be able to access any internal memory or any external resources. So first, let's go ahead and run this statement and we'll create our assembly. So we've executed it. The command completed successfully. Let's go over here to MyDB and let's look for it. And we should find it under Assemblies. It's not there, so let's refresh it. And there you can see MySQL CLR, um, our assembly created. Next, we're going to use that assembly to create our procedure. And when we do that, we're going to use the Create Procedure statement. We're going to give it a name. This procedure is going to be called USP underscore MySQL CLR. And we're going to give it the external name. And in this external name, we reference the assembly that we created, MySQL CLR, the class within that assembly, stored procedures, and then the method within that class, which is MySQL CLR. So let's execute that. And we see this is created successfully as well. So let's go into stored procedures. And you should see it down here. Let's refresh this view. And there it is, USP MySQL CLR. Now that it's created, Let's go ahead and execute it. And you can see we use the exec uh, command just like we would any normal T-SQL stored procedure. Let's go ahead and execute it. And there you can see the output from this stored procedure. This text is from the sample SQL CLR procedure, my SQL CLR. So you can see executing uh, SQL CLR stored procedures is exactly like executing T-SQL stored procedures. And this, was, this text was generated from our .NET code. Well, hopefully that helps you see how you can get started creating your own SQL Server CLR objects. Uh, that's the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching.